fuck, boy. You like that? You like that? I like that. That is very offensive. Fuck. Am I Jackson Hewitt? Hmm? Man, I should want a damn livery tax. I like the little dude in uh, the Statue of Liberty dancing on the side of the street. Makes hmm. me happy. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, you know what? The government bleeds us dry. It's annoying, ain't it? Yeah, I, I mean, I guess so, man. I'm just trying to copy some papers here. Man, I'm lonely. And my name's Larry. What's your name? I'm Jake. Jake? Uh, that's too long of a name. I like Jay. It's better. Like short, short names. Okay. You call me Lair. You want you want me to call you Lair? Yeah. You come back to my Lair? Well, man, I'm really just trying to copy some papers and get out of here. I mean, you want to go back to my Lair and fuck each other? Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really, really not about that, buddy. I'm just honestly trying to copy some papers right now. Um, well, I, got I mean, print. what's in it for me, though? If I, if I, if this, you get a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars. That's that's different. I mean, and I'll suck you off. Well, that's forward. I mean, I'm not. I don't judge anybody. A thousand dollars would help me out right now. Um, Do you shave? That's personal. I mean, we're in a Kinkos, man. I mean... Oh, fuck, we are in a Kinkos. I thought we were Liberty Tax. I'm, so what the fuck's outside? So some random guys outside with the damn Statue of Liberty. Can dancing. I get your phone number and we can, like, maybe talk about this in Yeah, private? whatever's, uh... What, what's the letters for 704? Come fuck me. Um, I mean, a thousand dollars. I mean, I, I, what, what do you have in mind? Like, I'll wipe your butt. You wipe my butt? With my fingers? For a thousand dollars. Yeah. Fuck taxes, right? Yeah, fuck taxes. Yeah, fuck America. Let's go wipe asses. Let's do it. Okay. Little did Jay know Larry was going to bleed him dry. Oh, damn it, did it again. Damn Jiffy Lube. I always prefer Valvoline. Man. Hey, buddy, how much is this going to, how long is this going to take? <laughs> hey, how's, how probably long? two weeks. No, what are you getting done here? Uh, just a brake job. A brake job? Yeah. Hmm. I could use a brake job. I mean, these mechanics, man, they charge arm and leg, don't they? Well, I don't know. My my uh, my, my friend's giving me a hookup, but uh, he hasn't given me a price yet. I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm just trying to get this done so I can get to work. Uh, what are you getting done? Damn old chain. I can't believe it's 69 69 for five quarts. Synthetic. Full synthetic. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I don't know. Prices. I'm just, uh, God, I need damn. this crap done, though. But I'm just going to go over here and sit down and wait in the waiting room. I mean, you know, I, I did my taxes last week. Uh, you know, and then, and now I'm here at this fucking mechanic shop, and I can't get old chain. Because I'm waiting on you getting your brake job. It's, I mean, it's nothing personal. Makes me frustrated. It's nothing pr- I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm just, like I said, I'm going to go sit down and... and Try to just hang out. Larry, your car's next. Oh, man. You hear that? My car's next. Hey, I'm Larry, by the way. Hi. Hey, I'm, I'm John. Nice. You want to go back and touch dicks at my house? <clears throat> uh, I mean, no, no, I, I really don't. I'll give you a hand job. That's, that does not, in, that does can, not increase anything. You can uh, lay down in my bed and I'll uh, use your dick as a stick shift. <sighs> this is, this is past weird i i really think this is inappropriate is it really there's an there's a you're woman, inappropriate there's a woman right next to us she's deaf how do you know she's making weird you don't hear her she's like uh, uh. i really i'm really just trying to get my car fixed and out of here this is this is just i'm not trying to make friends here at the at the mechanic shop i'll pay for your brake job that's 320 dollars that's nothing to me. To suck you off and swallow it all. You're telling me you're gonna pay off my brake job for me to get a blow job? Yeah. What's so far fetched about that? I mean, it's not. It's not. I don't know you. I have no I idea you. who you are. It adds to the thrill. I mean, it is exciting. I see and your pants is... getting. I see. I see it getting a little big down there. No, that's not happening at all. Pretty sure. 
okay, let's say I am I, I'm entertained by this the slightest amount. I do need the brake job, but I don't have a lot of cash. Can you offer a little bit more on top just to maybe sweeten the deal a little bit? Mm. Do it. Can you can you do the brake job in two hundred dollars, and I'll I'll oh, let yeah, you do yeah, whatever you yeah, want. Yeah. I'll let you fuck me in the ass. I don't want that. I, I'm just saying, like, if you want to give me a blow job and and take pictures or whatever, we'll we'll keep it at that. But I got rope duggies in my bathtub. We can take a bath together. I have limits. Okay, fair enough. Unbeknownst to John, Larry is going to take his arms <laughs> and legs. <laughs> just kidding. What's up, everybody? And welcome to another episode of Tact Lab. Yeah. I'm Tyler Nottingham. And this is our 18th episode, baby. So we're kind of bringing it in wild style. I'm trying not to look at Thomas right now because it's a little hard to listen to this song. A little hard. I'm, uh, I'm a little hard. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so, um, we're all together. Uh, we're in person. We're in Thomas's uh, dungeon of doom, and um, I'm surrounded by a bunch of friends, and and we're all kind of we're all kind of getting a chub right now. But that's okay. No touchy. Um, unless you're Larry. Larry will touch everything. Yeah. So, um, with that said, this episode we're we're we are we got we're bringing the comedy right now with this song, but it's going to be a serious episode. So, um, this is an episode about Larry Eiler, the highway killer, the interstate killer, killed twenty four people. Right? Four the of them market. were un un uh, unidentified. Untied. Yeah. Yeah. I think twenty one confirmed. Twenty one confirmed. I think. Some yeah, of if three or four that were kind of questionable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Um, so, uh, serious episode, and um, we want to. I want to start off this episode by saying we don't endorse any of the things that we're going to talk about, and we're going to bring humor to it as well. But we don't endorse it. We don't. Um, we don't belittle the people's lives that were taken. So, um, please don't take it and flip it, and um, you know, twist things around on us. So. Uh, with that said, we're going to jump right into this episode and um, start talking about Larry Eiler. Um, once again, I'm surrounded by my friends. I got, I've got, i got Chris to my right. Chris, how are you? Avoiding eye contact. Well, All right. you do your thing, boo. <laughs> what? So I now I got... To that intro. I've got Alex to my left. How are you, Alex? I just uh, <laughs> I think I need to get oil changed tomorrow. Don't. Don't sleep on that. There's a guy in China Grove that'll do it for free, probably. Okay, cool. Nice. <laughs> okay. Thomas, how are you feeling? You never heard of getting your dipstick checked? <laughs> I've heard of a finger Great. used as a dipstick. That's what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get the oil checked by the dipstick. Mm. If the plumber checked my pipes. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Got to flush the pipes. Your wife's got to call for that. Yeah. How are you feeling, Thomas? Mm, I'm good. <laughs> a little hot. It is a little hot down here, but that's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Well, um, I'm okay as well, and uh, let's get right into this episode. Let's do it. Um, we oh, didn't yeah. that little little bit at the beginning. That was a little uh, little taste of Larry out in public back in the day. Yeah, just for everybody. That could have been what one of his victims went through, yes. as far as being propositioned for sexual favors in return for money. Mm. Um, happened a lot with Larry. And uh, one person survived. Yes, I think. Yes, one that we know of, that one. he confessed of. So, yeah. Um, but I, I guess I'll jump in and I'll kind of talk about his his um, beginning. Um, and each each you know we're gonna kind of pick 
piggyback off each other. Yeah. Um, Larry William Eiler, a.k.a. the Interstate Killer, a.k.a. the Highway Killer, was born December 21st, 1952 in Indiana. And he had four brothers and sisters. And uh, his mom and dad were George and Shirley. And his father would physically and emotionally abuse him and his brothers and sisters and his mother. So that's kind of an interesting, like, that's probably where his mental breakdown Mm -hmm. began. I wonder what happened with his dad because Larry was kind of a fucked up individual. Uh, probably violent, some sort of violence. You don't think there was some sexual abuse? That might have been. been. Might have been towards his mom, or well, towards him too. I it could have been towards him too. Yeah. Maybe but his dad has suppressed gay feelings. Also, you think that's a that was talked about, or it could have been? Are, are, you, been. are you making a speculation? Make a spe- I'm speculating. Yeah, I mean, hopefully Larry didn't get sodomized by his dad. But we know there's not really a lot of details about his upbringing with his father. He probably did and liked it, but didn't for want reasons, to be. yeah, yeah, it's possible. So um, they separated. His parents separated uh, when he was just two years old. Um, so that basically left him in the care of uh, of his sister. Um, the oldest one was ten. So oh, nice. Yeah, um, not a lot of proper parenting going on there. Um, was his real sister? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, he had all of them were real. You know, I didn't know. Maybe it was like you know his like stepsister or something. We was getting. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see where you're going. <laughs> what are you doing, Larry? <laughs> what are you doing, step bro? I, why aren't you hard? Um, so he also went to a Catholic school. Did you guys read about this? He went to St. Joseph uh, School. Uh-uh. Um, so that was also yeah. a problematic thing that we don't have any details about. There's a lot of there. There are questionable things that happen in schools, and there are even more questionable things that happen in Catholic schools. So weird hearing about all these men in power, Catholic silence football. in his history. Yeah, I'm thinking he was uh, father touched by Father Gabriel. It's possible. Father Gabriel sounds like a a uh, Jewish um, school. That's the, the character from Walking Dead. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He's saying Jewish. That was a black man. He'll keep an eye on that you. can't happen, right? <laughs> so, um, um, he was uh, regular with sports, but he was bullied a lot, he apparently. Was, he was six one, man. He was a real Chad. Yeah, apparently he was pretty tall, but for some reason he got bullied um, because he was from a poor family, and uh, they made fun of him for his mom and dad getting a divorce. But his sister stepped in to help. Which made things worse. Mm. Nobody wants well, their you, sister jumping in to save have them. Your sister no. help you. You can't fight your own fights, and you put the. Uh... So his mom remarried, and um, that's exactly what happened. Anytime his mom remarried, she always like gravitated towards the wrong guy. Um, it was the '60s, so bet. Yeah, she married three times. Um, that's and it. Three times, but no, I'm sorry, four. She got four. So. Uh, Eiler's father and his first two stepfathers drank heavily, and he and his siblings were subjected to frequent physical and emotional abuse, with one of his stepfathers frequently holding Eiler's head beneath scalding water as a form of discipline. How old was he when this happened? It doesn't say. Wow. Um, But that's some fucking waterboarding shit. Yeah. I need to apologize to Father Gabriel. This is where it started. (laughs) This is where it started. This is where his pinned up. Anger came from. Now his, his dad just walked in after a long day at work. Larry's got like three wooden blocks on the floor. He steps in one. And he's just like, "Fucking Larry, I've had it." Get the water going. It's terrible. Had he's it. like eight years old, and his dad's walks in. What are you doing, stepson? <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you're tearing me apart, Larry. <laughs> so, so you can imagine the the <laughs> power that he realized that his dad had over him, and I think that's kind of where some of his frustrations came as an adult like the power he had over the young kids yeah and yeah, the things he did. i mean he learned he's like he learned it's like you know stepdad stepdad help i'm stuck in the bathtub <laughs> stuff well, like that they give him a slice of the family pie you know what i'm saying stuck yeah. under the bed <laughs> <laughs> so i'm stuck in the dryer my finger's stuck in the drain so that that's I'm what stuck in the window why are they stuck in so many places <laughs> i'm stuck under the coffee table they got ass too big they're cleaning man they're getting they're getting they're that obviously vac- they gotta find that cat they're you see the one where they glued their hands to each other 
Oh, no, man. I didn't see that, but it's always they're always trying to reach a spider web and they just get stuck. It was the the brother uh they had lotion like sunscreen or something and he traded it out and put uh super glue in there and it's like, Oh, this is this feels really good. Wait, my hands are stuck to you now and it's just two girls and their hands are stuck <laughs> to each other and it's just like, Ha oh, ha, I got you And then that happened. All right. <laughs> I ain't seen that one. <laughs> I haven't seen that one either. So, um, so it says here, due to his increasing stubbornness. Educate and yourself, Alex. Lotion commotion. <laughs> due to his stubbornness and erratic behavior, he was actually sent off to a school for unruly boys. Um, but he he actually persuaded his mom to come back home. Um, and then after this, he underwent a, a psychological evaluation at a child guidance clinic. And then these psychological tests revealed Eiler to be of average intelligence, although suffering from severe insecurity and holding an extreme fear of separation and abandonment. I am a spot man. <laughs> hey, he sounded average, Thomas. He oh. hit gump. He was of average size. So, um, How big was he, Tyler? I don't know. Okay. We don't have that information. Uh, I think they said seven and kind of girthy. Average size in the U.S. is um, is uh, eight half? eight inches. Oh. In the U.S., no. like five, I feel like that's no. a lot. It was like five point one. <laughs> yeah, come on, man. We all got that. Um, <laughs> so wink. So his adolescence. So when he reached puberty, he discovered he was a homosexual. I don't know how you describe how you how do you discover that you're a homosexual, but Larry did. I don't know about you guys, but I mean, when I was in that age, it's like, I mean, those boobies are nice. So he's probably like he's in the locker room whipping towels and I it's like I never thought about that though I never made a decision like yeah, me am either. I there's, gay or am I not gay? Those but wieners are nice. <laughs> well, that's pro- he probably didn't either. He's probably just never seen the titties. He's just like man, that's a nice dick. Well, yeah. hey, he discovered he was a homosexual, so that is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it, it goes back to your like a. Like, Oh, we shouldn't go there. Yeah, <laughs> no, no. It goes back to like a core memory of like being a child, and yeah. then when you grow up, oh, and then you're you know, stepdad. Okay, gotcha. I thought no, you, no, you get you you are learned your stuff subconsciously. So it's like mm-hmm. you see your parents together. It's a man and a woman. So you're like, well, yeah, you know, not saying you got to be beat or something like. But since his childhood wasn't optimal, his childhood was mostly men beating him. So he associated a lot of his growing up with other men. That's just my. I thought though. you were saying it was a mental break. It was a mental part of your brain gone. Probably when he shot a load oh, when he got no, hit. No. I was I was actually, dad, when his dad shot a load as his dad was holding him under the water. Yeah, could have been. That also could have been. And it's it like, could have also been. That's the, confusing as a kid. Yeah. When uh, your dad shoots a load on your back. I never had, had to happen to me. No, I had no, a me either. good father. Happy but father you know, me. you know how sometimes, like when your adrenaline gets going, like your whole body amps up. You can get yeah. an adrenaline boner. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've never got that. Okay. Well. Tell so us. When he's, well, so have you I'm, got an adrenaline boner? You can. Have you got one? Yeah. I never okay. Got one. So I, when he's like eight, being shoved in the bathtub and waterboarded, his adrenaline probably ramped up. He might have got an adrenaline boner. He saw another man and associated yeah. a boner with a man. Were you being robbed? I don't remember. And you got an adrenaline boner? <laughs> I got in a fight. It's like, Argh! You got in a fight? Someone was bullying you and you came no, out of that like, with an erection? Well, it's like your blood gets going and your whole body just amps, so everything in your body is just like, Hur! Yeah. And your dick just goes. I used to I get, mean, the only time that I got an erection. Me. <laughs> it's I, I'm, look this up I'm not saying it's just you, but the only time I got erections and I didn't want erections was in school. In class, yeah. Yeah. I would get an erection and then you would be terrified that you were going to get called on Mm -hmm. and then you'd have to put it up the waistband to kind of hide it with your shirt Mm -hmm. a boner that pops up during a rush of adrenaline is in a completely non-sexual way when we were going up the lift on the roller coaster my balls started tingling at the bottom of the first drop i had a full-on adrenaline boner Mm, i got an erection on an airplane once too the vibrations and the uh protect your erection something got to me was it what kind of plane was it oh it was a big one okay i've heard that that makes sense I had a big one on the big one. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, this is when he discovered he was a homosexual. Well, hey, what else you got? <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, I thought like, you had another I just, I just, I'm the only one with that story, so I feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I jacked off in church. It's okay. I don't remember the context. It's just one of those things. Like, I remember I had an adrenaline rush, and it was just like my dick got hard. And I was like, well, if, if, I, don't, I don't know why it did. It was just, I guess my blood was pumping, and it just had to go somewhere. But you don't remember what you were doing. Or do you just want to keep that a little secret? <laughs> I don't remember. 
Um, okay, all right, all right. So uh, he was actually kind of open about this. Larry was open about his homosexuality, um, only to his family, though. I, I can't imagine he told his stepfather, though. Mm-mm. I don't think so. Probably but, his probably his brothers and sisters, maybe I'm his mom. I guess his stepfather was Larry with him. The only, the only stepfather you can probably tell that you're gay is the dude from uh, Santa Claus. <laughs> what, Tim Neil? Allen? No, Neil? with the sweater. Neil? <laughs> Neil? Is that his name? Yeah, Neil. Neil. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. Oh, the stepdad. The stepdad. Yeah. The I tell him, you can tell him you're gay. Neil? <laughs> nice sweater, Neil. <laughs> Tim Allen was the boss like, in that movie. Like, no, I was thinking his stepdad was closeted, so he's like he found a woman who had a nice young child that he could... Yes. That yeah. man was the man that Larry Eiler was having a sexual relationship Had with. to have. Yeah. So well, if it's also back in the '60s, they had a lot of homophobia back then too. Yeah, but it was also like the freedom times. Where like it was freedom but, times, but then a lot of families, if you were if you were like like gay or something like that, or tried to be openly, they would physically beat the gay out of you. Mm. They had gay camps and st- no, this is a fact thing. They had gay camps and stuff. They mm-hmm. would send their kids. to. They still have gay camps, and, well, and, and like, they would like chain them to the wall and like yeah, take a sock full of soap and, and just beat them. They would pray, just praise Jesus, pray, praise Jesus, pray the gay away. That's what they called. There it. was there's one that's actually still under fire that they can't find that over over three or four hundred kids have gone to, it's and they terrible. Bl- they blindfold these kids it's on terrible, the dude. way to this place, and then the kids can't find it. They they get yeah. uh, kids have died there. They get abducted. It's yeah. like well, it's like it's a taking, mom and pro, it's a mom taking, and dad thing. <laughs> What's a mom and pops conversion camp? It's a mom and dad. It's a it parent. Was, it's a parent problem. brick and mortar. <laughs> <laughs> My kid ain't gonna be gay. They get the wrong kid. They put the sack over his head. It's like taking two. He's over there like counting one, two, left turn. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I will fight you. I that have certain set of skills. <laughs> I just <laughs> so, but in reality, those are terrible. You know. Yeah. I mean, believe what you want to believe, and all that stuff. That's freedom of whatever. But don't beat people just because they believe differently. Yeah, a four-year-old just, doesn't have a clue up. what's going on, and you I can't send a four-year-old to gay camps. Once again, on. a four-year-old does not know what it's doing, so they're, we they're, shouldn't have the so. four-year-olds there. So. It's just like the four-year-old that's out on the side of the street with the hobo mom or the hobo dad. They don't know why they're there. It just makes the hobo dad look worse, so he gets more money because his kid's there. So, yeah. anyways, he did try to date girls. None of these relationships became physical or worked out. Go figure. Mm-hmm. Um, but he tried. Um, he well, did He did not graduate high school. Well, he what? did gain his GED. Eh, same so, thing. Shortly after leaving college, he obtained employment as a security guard, um, and everything went fine. He went, um, he went to college for, to be a security guard? He went to college for his GED. Yeah, you go to a community college and get a GED. Oh, okay. Well, if, yeah. if you drop out of high school, you, that's where you go to get your GED. Yeah, that's... Hey, dumbass. Yeah, yeah. we're in the <laughs> 70s now, so that's where... Was... Criv- Chris is flexing his privilege right now, because he didn't have to get a GED. None of he, you did. He didn't have... He, he doesn't know about <laughs> I these. Didn't, I didn't go to a college. <laughs> I didn't either. <laughs> so we all graduated at the same time. Nobody <laughs> has, has guy, a GED. This guy's got four-year degrees. You do, Chris? You got a four-year degree? No. I, only, I only got a two-year degree. Yeah. Oh, you don't get to here? Yeah. Oh, sorry. You don't have, you don't have, <laughs> I, I don't have college. Have yeah. Money. Alex doesn't. Do no. you have college? Yeah. What, two years or yeah. four? What's two. your, what's your major? <laughs> he has a minor. <laughs> Why are we? <laughs> Larry Allard had a minor. <laughs> Why are we on this? <laughs> okay. Know. We sidetracked too far. <laughs> so, so he actually Chris, was. Chris, what's your social s- security number? <laughs> Wait, right, three five seven, three oh nine six two. Oh. <laughs> You're gonna fuck somebody over. Four three nine six. I think that was enough. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> back on track. Anyways, he got out. He's got his GED. He worked for a while, and he started to get established in the Indianapolis gay community. Um, frequently frequenting gay bars, frequently engaging in casual liaisons with men. So glory holes. Uh, Chris, do you have some details about his sex, uh, sex um, capades? Well, this was a se- This is in the eighties. I don't want to. That's okay. I mean, as long as it, what I, I'm, I'm interested in is uh, it ties into it because he was very prominent in the gay community. Yeah, as far as uh, in uh, Chicago and uh, <laughs> I like other this. Though. I, I do have this note. Several of these individuals noted Eiler averted his eyes from his partner during intercourse while shouting profanities <laughs> such as, Bitch! 
and whore. Has he got Tourette's now? <laughs> Le- leading many to believe Viler was fantasizing his partner was female. What? Well, mm. I mean, it's, it's, he's like too hot to that's handle. That's definitely not the time for your Tourette's to come out. I guess here's a story about his long term relationship then. Do it. Okay. In uh, 1981, he uh, got into a relationship with a 20 year old married man. Oh. Okay. The married mm. man had two kids, I believe, and his All name right, was. So you guys are on this. His Dr. Like, Little. Okay. This guy's name is like John Dabroska. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Well, that's yeah, the guy yeah, he got yeah. with when he got caught, right? Yeah, he lived with his wife and children. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, the wife and all. I'll let one of you guys tell that story. They were in the mass. Uh, yeah, they were in the masochism. Masochism, beating each other up, strangling each other, yeah, like, cutting each other. Mm-hmm. I do know some details about some of his sexcapades. He liked to cut. Uh, his partner on the neck a little bit. Oh, yeah, they vampire. they bound each other in devices. What kind of devices? It just says devices. It doesn't say, but I like to think they had like a sex swing, and he had some sort of uh, rope right. and pulley system. Pray walked in, like you got a lot of smoke alarms in this house. <laughs> Spreads them out like fucking uh, the. The, uh, what is that, vacation, uh, Christmas vacation on the uh, front cover yeah, of the yeah, movie yeah. where he's, like, being shocked, oh, but he's okay. spread out in all four quadrants. Um, it did say Clark that, um, <laughs> blah, 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 although others had engaged in sexual activity with him, described him as an individual with a sadistic streak and a violent temper, which would surface during sexual moments, often involving Eiler extensively bludgeoning then inflicting light knife wounds upon unwilling partners, particularly to their torsos. That's... Who continues to fuck this guy? Well, apparently the guy kind of got a little iffy because Eiler eventually can, you know, confronted him about infidelity. So the little 20 year old was cheating on him no, with his man. wife. How dare you wife. have sex with a woman? <laughs> So, so was he cheating on Larry or was he cheating on his wife? No, he was cheating on his wife and Larry. How dare you cheat on me? Double cheater. With possibly his wife. So if he was his, well... His wife knew about it, but she's like, I'm cool with this because he's paying a third of the rent. <laughs> if this guy was well known in the gay community at, for like bludgeoning people and stabbing people... Yeah, he's called Daddy Mercury. And uh, he's also... <laughs> how, can people, can, how can people continue to hook up with this guy knowing what they're going to get into? So, that was the um, 80s, man. Yeah. Well, he also uh, coerced them with alcohol and drugs and stuff, too. Yeah. And yeah, that, that's true. And break jobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. He definitely would uh, taxes sweeten that deal. Pays their taxes. <laughs> um, yeah, he would he'd get stabbed in the fucking abdomen as he comes. Because you, you, you're probably getting reamed from behind. And, like, you're enjoying it. And all of a sudden you feel like... Little, like grazings on your back. He starts oh. just donkey. Well, you're like, you're, like, like, you're, you're bound. Yeah, you're like, what and the you're fuck like, is happening? He's just like, don't worry, it's just an ice cube, but it's really a knife slicing mm-hmm. you open. Do you think Larry <laughs> was a giver or a taker? I think he was, he was a, a bottom or a top. Look, I don't think a guy murdering people was going to allow himself to be in a position to be penetrated. He's a top. He's a top. Yeah, I think he's a giver. Wait, but, wait, 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 a top? Is that a, that's the guy? Is that the guy on top, like absurding? Like a power top? That's the guy fucking people in oh, an asshole. Jack Hammer. Oh, I was thinking the top is the guy getting it in his no, bottom. No, the top's the guy that's dominating. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of a power bottom, sorry. Power bottom, Well, yeah. a power bottom is someone that that can take it and take it good. You put it back. And you push back. Dun, dun, you push dun, 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 dun. out, in, out, in. Like, <laughs> take it real good. You're not, dun, 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 dun. you're not, you're not kind of like hot, you're not kind of like forcing up on the was, bed. Uh, you're going back and forth, like when you back and forth. Like sit there and girl goes back and forth on it. Yeah. That's what you're doing. To the, the power bottom. Yeah, see, that's what I'm saying. But like a like, rocking chair. I thought you were saying yeah. top, as in like he's up oh, top getting it. I, I, he is up top, and he's it. giving it. He's no, giving okay. it. Yeah. A power bottom has a hungry bottom. You ever heard of a uh, laying pipe? Yeah. Well, they, a power bottom has the pipe. Yeah. I'm sure he also. Uh, he's fresh draining it. He probably still, you know, did some foreplay and some handwork and stuff. See, so. okay, I there's, was a, there's a pipe, but I'm then sure. imagine a smaller pipe going into the bigger pipe. Oh, okay. oh docking? He's docking. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know that. I use that term wrong. The pipe normally is for the man with the dick, but in this instance, we we got a pipe for an ass, and then a smaller pipe that's the dick that goes in the small, in the oh. bigger oh, pipe. He's a see, pipe fitter. I was confused. Pipe fitter. <laughs> that's a tight pipe. See, I was confused. I thought he was doing the squatting. Uh-uh. Just free balling everywhere. <laughs> what is what? What's Larry doing in your head? What is he squatting imagine, and free balling? He's imagining the guy. Yeah, Thomas has it. Thomas has it. Thomas has it. He's got the guy bound up, and he's squatting down over. 
Yeah. He's teabagging him? Yeah. <laughs> ball sack, ball sack. Yeah. Hair getting knotted. He's just like squat <laughs> racking. He's like, I'm just doing air squats on your penis. Oh, you like oh that? God. Not a smart touch man. My, you like it when I touch my testicle to your testicle? <laughs> so, no. Power bottom and a, and a top. Or, or the top gives it, a power bottom takes it. All right, sorry, I always had that confused. All right, hey, we're on this. Everybody, we're, everybody needs to learn. Yeah. You gotta, you're here to learn. That's okay. Yeah. All right. You're um, yeah. So we're we're now getting to his Get his murderous uh, his murderous future uh, slash murderous past. Yeah. <laughs> um, these things all happened in the eighties. Um, yep. So, and and this is when he did. St- and for some reason, I saw here that he wore a lot of Marine t-shirts. Mm, false valor? Stolen valor? Stolen valor. Mm. <laughs> Stolen valor. Guy wanted to be some big Marine guy to impress the other, you know, uh, other bears in the community. You probably watched Heartbreak Ridge too many times with Clint Eastwood. Yeah. I thought he was a goddamn Marine. Yeah. Yeah. Instead so, of, instead of, instead of Simplify, he was Simp. For, well, for he fire. was no Simp. Simplifying. Simplifying. <laughs> I think he would be a Simmed. Assumed. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, and then my notes here gets into um, when he got into meeting that professor named uh, Robert Little, who was Robert a doctor, Little. Uh, Dr. Little. Um, but we can get into that relationship. <laughs> Isn't that uh, the guy that could talk to animals? No, that's Stuart. No, that's not Stuart Little. That's uh, <laughs> that that's Doolittle. Doctor Doctor Doolittle. So Stuart Little is just a rat. Fucking <laughs> mouse. So, uh, you know, the first guy that he had a contact with in 1978, mm-hmm. who's that? I don't, I didn't get his name, but, uh, he was, that was his, <laughs> well, I got the quick tidbit about it. That was his first, uh, run in with police and his first time exploring. His name would be Craig Long. Craig Long. Yes. Okay. Hmm. In 1978. He uh, would find a guy named Craig Long. <laughs> he, he uh, longs for Craig. Can I see how long it is, Craig? He probably did. So he he probably definitely did. About. He definitely did. So he uh, he pretty much put him in handcuffs mm-hmm. and stabbed him, and uh, you know the police got found him. Police got called there. They ended up taking uh, Craig to the hospital, and Larry was you know detained, but he didn't get brought up on the charges because Craig fled the hospital. Whoa, <laughs> the, those details you skimmed over are I, way. I know, are I, th- I so know. what happened I, was. I paraf- I, I went quick with it. He stabbed the kid in the in the chest, punctured his lung. Wait, was Craig a kid? Yes. Okay. Craig yeah. was 19. A young male. Oh, okay. And this guy was like 26 or something. Larry, yeah. So, he and, and, and Long slumped over on the ground. Larry got scared and left. And then the neighbor, this kid woke up and ran to the neighbor's house. And the neighbors got him help. Larry freaked out. And drove to the neighbor's house and gave the cops the the handcuff keys, and said, "I tried to kill this kid." <laughs> and so the cops searched his vehicle and found, you know, uh, they found all the, all the items. They used. Uh, yeah, he was arrested. Oh, recovered a hunting knife, a metal tipped whip, a butcher knife, a further set of handcuffs, tear gas, and a sword. Tear, tear Where's gas? the zip ties and duct tape? Is he going to Chaz? <laughs> this guy is a mediocre he killer. Sword. He had his sword. <laughs> we ride tonight. <laughs> I just want to see how the sword goes through your asshole. For Condor. So they they arrested him, and then uh, he was charged with aggravated battery. So do you have you want to continue, Thomas? Yeah, I got that. Um, now, why did he? Uh, why did the guy run away? That got stabbed. Were you embarrassed? Um, oh, he was. I do want to say this. Go ahead. Go ahead. He was trying. You got the facts. Just go ahead. Long okay. was running away and was yelling at Isla. He, you queer. <laughs> oh, he ran away because he was closeted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, Larry yeah. chased Larry chased him down and stabbed him. Like he'd rather have a gaping hole in his heart than in his butt. He didn't know he was going to get stabbed mm. physically and metaphorically. Mm. So. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, just Thomas, I was just making sure because you said he ran away. Yeah, the dude fled the hospital so that uh, he wouldn't be outed in the community. Gotcha. Okay. Makes he sense. was, because, you know, I think back in the 70s, late 70s, early 80s, it was very uh, taboo. Yes. It was not a thing to be openly gay. Well, the, the interesting thing was, is that the judge set his bond to $10,000 and his friends and family raised it. So he was, he was let out on bond. Huh. 
That sounds like a, a, a GoFundMe from the seventies when something happens to somebody and family raise money for them. Yeah, yeah. So almost like communities cared for each other back yeah. then. So the the <laughs> interesting thing is that Eiler's lawyer offered Long, the victim, a check from Robert Little. Mm. Now remember who Robert Little was. Robert Little is going to be his accomplice mm-hmm. on so uh, called accomplice. Yes, yeah, so called. It never was proven. Right. So he gave this kid. $2,500 in return for agreeing not to press charges. And this kid decided to accept the offer. And Eiler's charges and his plea uh, was turned into not guilty instead of aggravated battery. So he was acquitted and uh, was only fined $43 for court fees. Wow. Nice. That's pretty good. That's a good That's, deal. He got off. $2,500, <laughs> $2,543 <Almost. laughs> will get you the ability to stab a kid. In, back, back in the eighties, yeah, like back does. in 1978. Wow. Just stab a kid, pay him, to, pay him a couple grand. Done. He was trying to push him away and forgot that he had, he had a knife in his hand as he was pushing him. <laughs> he pushed him with the knife. No, no, he had a knife. He's like, get away from me! Oh fuck! No, Ew. no. The 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 report said that Larry said he forgot he was holding a ten inch blade and it just so happened to stab. Well, I, I can see that happen. Yeah, I can I see myself doing the same thing. Self defense. <laughs> yeah. So. Like that guy that accidentally like shot up a school. He just pretended he didn't know what room he had. We're kind of like that uh that vice president we had that shot that dude on a hunting trip. Yeah, things happen. Yeah. He was in my way. <laughs> I didn't know about that. <laughs> you did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that vice president. For some reason, I thought we were talking about a vice president at Jamie. one of our like South Rowan school or something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you apologize to me. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna tell him that I. He accidentally shot you. That's a, uh, that's a callback. Got shot there. I don't know what happened. So uh, I said, it says your side note that he was in a relationship with John Dabrowski. So yeah. Anyways, um, but basically, in '78 is when he attempted his first murder, mm-hmm. and then his yes. next one was in '83. So from seventy eight to eighty three, okay, he so. went that long. Apparently, no, was he, he, was Satan, he was Satan himself with that one dude. Nineteen eighty two, but okay, Jay Reynolds. Okay, that I was, don't a, have that was that his one. first real victim. So he, so he didn't one. kill the, the guy Kinkos. that he was bounding up. That's cool. I yeah. have the first one on mine is this uh, Irvin Gibson, but you guys say there was one that happened in eighty two. Uh, there was a lot that happened there's in like eighty two. Uh, yeah, there's a few that happened in eighty two before uh, Irvin. Okay. What's were any of them pretty bad? Uh, uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, Alex. Oh, I mean, I just got a quick. It's just a one line. Mine's the, my, say probably it. Same, same thing. thing. Yeah. Uh, on March twenty second, nineteen eighty two, uh, I guess his first actual murder was Jay Reynolds, stabbed to death outside Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah, October third, nineteen ninety two. Uh, Devoid Baker. Uh, his age was fourteen. He was found strangled and dumped in Indianapolis. Oh, he was going to minors at this point. That's wait. Are you? Yeah. I think he. Who, what was his name? Uh, Devoid Baker. Oh, they found him in '92. Yes. Yes. Okay. So oh, he was okay. he was probably killed though in 82. in the in the '80s. Yeah. The, I I think the interesting thing with uh, with Larry is the ability to cut the abdomen, stab the abdomen. Mm-hmm. He wasn't very precise, but multiple victims would have their intestines actually kind of spilling out. Yeah. Kind of like peeping out a little bit of the belly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I I don't know why that stuck out to me so much, but. Most, like mo- most of his victims had their in- their small intestines sticking now, out of the body. When he killed people, he wasn't like he was raged. Okay. But like, so his, he wasn't like, having sex with them no. while he killed them, right? His okay. His method, from what I gathered from the research, was he would pick up people from gay bars, gay clubs, or hitchhikers. He would offer them money, drugs, or alcohol, and tell them to get in his car. He would say, you know, get them kind of drunk and then take them to an abandoned farmhouse, an open field, just somewhere random, mm. uh, or sometimes just his vehicle. And he would get them plastered to almost a comatose state, tie them up, handcuff them, do something like that. And then he would uh, either do sexual acts with himself towards them where he would jerk off or insert while he started to beat them to death and stabbed them and sliced them with mm-hmm. his knife until he finally killed them by either beating strangulation or just cutting the fuck out of them yeah but that was nothing like so, i was anticipating that's pretty like, uh, so they called him the interstate and the highway killer because he would always dump his bodies in an open field or an abandoned place near uh, interstate or just bypass highway some sort of large interstate system like uh, steve crockett is a 19 year old that was found murdered 
and he was stabbed 32 times. Yes. Four times in the head. He was, yeah, he was just yeah. dumped. And yeah, he that's dumped his body. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the victims, had, like you said, had her pants down. Yeah. He was sloppy with his cover-up, though. Mm -hmm. No, None of the bodies were hidden very well. Like, um, the body of Irvin Gibson, um, who was actually discarded atop the body of a dog, which had also been mm -hmm. stabbed to death. It's like um, no respect. It's just like disregard for the body. He tried to. There's a weird story I'll get to where he did attempt to bury four people in a shallow grave beside of a tree. Yeah. Most so, of the time, he was just lazy and just said. So he kept the bodies long enough. No, 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 no. No, he, he would do it and dump just it. do it, dump, oh, and then okay. get on the highway and leave. Yeah, and normally he just put them in a field, which I think is weird. Like Daniel Scott McNeve, McNeevy or McNeve was discovered in a field. He had suffered yeah. eleven knife wounds to his neck, mm. five to his back, and eleven to his abdomen, with one causing causing sections of his small intestine to protrude through the, his abdomen, and so like. It, so that was nine days later, Eiler murdered a 25-year-old, and his body was thrown from a bridge and oh, remained yeah. undiscovered until December 5th. So to put that into perspective, May 9th, he killed someone. Nine days later, he killed someone. And then December 5th. So from May 9th to December 5th, this, this kid's body was just in a creek. Wow. Just floating around. Yeah. And then... A tree trimming crew discovered the body of 28-year-old Ralph Khaleesi, mm -hmm. who had been stabbed 17 times with a butcher knife, with several wounds inflicted into his abdomen, causing sections of his small intestine to protrude through his body. Yeah. It was a two-year span where he killed at least 21 people, mm -hmm. wow. at least, and they only could link him to a few of these. But he that's crazy. That one was, sent him to one sent him to jail. Yeah, yeah. And we'll talk about that. That's crazy yes. that that was still the 80s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And think but, about all the other killers in the 80s, too. Yeah. Like, this was a terrifying time. And everybody was like, the 80s used to be so safe. Your kids could be outside. Yeah, it's dangerous was, now. That was before cameras and social media and pictures of everything. It was like the cusp of our Serial technology. killers. Yeah. But, you know, it was the cusp of security cameras, mm -hmm. all that. It was like yeah. the last dying days of murder. I think the 70s and 80s were the heydays. That's where, had, that's where you had the, the peak for the, the most famous. Yeah, but it's also yeah. the dying days because as soon as you enter the yeah. 90s, it's like. Well, Richard Ramirez. It's starting to die off. Yeah, because your like ability. Cameras. Yeah. Now it's like I kill somebody. They're like, yo, we got metadata that you well, did. Well, they got the guy in yeah. California that's shooting people in the park they can't find. Because he's smart, probably. He's like leaving he's his killing people. to other places. Well, they can't find the, the guy that shot up the chop zone. They don't have. They can't <laughs> fucking find him. How do, how do you have all these people that live there they or stay in there? Yeah, anyways, so. That's um, another topic. <laughs> I think the dude just liked to see guts is what I I'm think so. uh, thinking. I th it, it probably got him a little if, a little aroused whenever he started beating people. If he would have waited like four more years, he could have watched Guts on TV. Global Guts. <laughs> Global <laughs> Guts. And if he would have waited ten more years, he could have got the internet. And could have climbed the Crag Mountain. <laughs> he could have <laughs> gone to facesofdeath.com. <laughs> right, he could have went on the dark, dark web and... Order guts. Bought an arm. <laughs> Bought an arm, yes. Ordered, yeah. <laughs> Ordered guts from the dark web. Wait, 1 800 guts to go. Whatever it's called. I'm going to give them two Bitcoin and that'll give me a severed arm. <laughs> Call today at 999. Guts Emporium. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, we could we could just, like, I got one here that we're two mushroom hunters. What's a mushroom hunter, by the way? <laughs> oh, is what? it what? Joe Rogan and uh, Joe, <laughs> Joey Diaz. <laughs> 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 Is it people looking for truffles? I don't what? know what they, they type found? of mushrooms they were looking for. It just says two mushroom hunters. All right, I'm going to say found trouble. they're either going to get truffles <laughs> they or they're going trouble. to find trouble. the mushrooms to get high from. What's truffle butter for real? Not the not the Urban Dictionary, but there's truffle mushrooms, <laughs> you're saying? There's real truffles, yeah. And then what's truffle butter? I assume they take truffles and it's a mix it butter. with butter. So these two mushroom guys. Mushroom hunters. They found a human torso in a plastic bag. Like that's a, that's a one big mushroom. <laughs> this fucking thing is no, gonna. You know one of them picked makes a mushroom. mushroom. One of them, he's like, oh look, it's a nice prime shroom, bro. It's for like it's a prop. Fucking oh shit! He goes, it. he goes to pick it. And no, it's he smelled like it. A they fingernail comes off. No, that wasn't a prop. Oh. He, he probably smelled like death. <laughs> yeah. So 
It smelled the... like that rug in here when it got oh, wet. Come on. <laughs> Thomas, what have you been doing with your rugs? <laughs> Throwing them away. <laughs> <laughs> but I would too, I guess, if it contained a body. <laughs> <laughs> It's don't, just dog don't, pee you're smelling. Don't go in my woods. God. Especially if you're a mushroom hunter. <laughs> hey, Joe Rogans. We go out there and get some mushrooms, Joe Rogans. Hey, Alex. Hey. You ever tried DMT? Our bodies make it naturally. You gotta yeah. tap into that shit, bro. Ever seen a fucking chimpanzee eat another chimpanzee? Do you want to? Yeah. <laughs> hey, Joe Rogans. Fucking chimpanzees. And then he ate the DMT and you gotta, died. You gotta get my, my chimp kettlebell. Chimp kettlebell? I think chimps are strong there. enough anyway. He has one. I have one. <laughs> I have a girl, a, oh, I thought you were talking about chimps doing kettlebell. No, I have a gorilla. <laughs> I got a 60 pound gorilla kettlebell. Fuck off. You hate it. That's a I small like gorilla. Anyway. Well, so do you guys know about this? The 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 kid who was found by the mushroom hunters? No. No. Enlighten us. He, he was actually cut into pieces. Uh, mm. His head, arms, and legs had been severed from the torso with a hacksaw. You think that was Larry's last resort? Like a panic? Cut his life into... It was his hacksaw <laughs> <in the> moment. <laughs> Cut my life into pieces! I am Larry Island. Wait, you said he had a hacksaw? Suffocation. Yeah. He did he use it already, on the ridge? He already made <laughs> it. He already, he, already he, he already did it. Darn. <laughs> you missed it. You missed you it. Keep the lyrics, though. Suffocation. No <laughs> breathing. Oh, Cut him in pieces. I'm fighting to breathe. So I wonder how he drained the blood. Because all these, piece, all these drank it. pieces were drained. I like to think. Do you think you could take an arm and just like squeeze the blood you just out? Cut it. You slit it. Yeah, I pull think. Pull the skin back. I think if I hang. was gonna do that, I would like hang somebody up upside down while cut they're still neck. alive. Cut their neck and let bleed and out. And let their heart pump all their blood. Yeah, out. but he wasn't doing that crap. Well, if he cut them up enough, I mean, I mean they if he hunted a deer out, right? or something, he could have been like, "That's how I'd do it." If he hit a couple main arteries all over, especially if he's hitting. The oh yeah, Thomas is right. This guy's like. He's just slicing like slicing into his yeah. delight. Yeah, no, he's not doing. He's like so he, he probably he, when he's at home, he probably like does the thing where he lays on his back, lifts his legs up, and jerks off on his face. Oh. So he probably took the body to the tree and did the same thing. Oh. Just cut him. Yeah, you don't want to waste a drop of that. Yeah. So he used the blood um, for lube. This this was one of the guys that was unidentified though. <sighs> did they ever find his DNA at the scenes of any of these? No. No, no. Hmm. That he was that's re- the last one. So yeah. he wore protection. That's okay. They never. They. He was not really. He was caught <laughs> twice and released twice. I basically. think that was before DNA evidence was real big. Too. Well, they found DNA on the last crime. Well, yeah, the one that got him. Yeah, because that's they and had I'm fingerprints and all that stuff. You say that one body that his first kill they found in the nineties. The second one. His the second one. Yeah. yeah. I'm betting they that, used DNA. Well, they that. don't know when that kid was killed. But it was outside. Yeah. Mm. I was outside, so you yeah, got to imagine yeah. decomposition, oh, yeah. throwing people in a river and stuff. They just pinned that one on him. The police sergeant actually did it. Doesn't make himself look good. That the police FBI department did it. Mm-hmm. So here's that story that I was telling you about, where these four people were found in a shallow grave, and here's and you'll you'll the weird thing is is that three were Caucasian and one was black. So that's not the weird uh-huh. part. It's the weird part is that he buried three Caucasians on one side of that tree. And the black guy on the other side of the tree. So he was racist. Yeah, that's what's not it's like possible. Me. It's very possible. So hmm. uh, three of these victims, all Caucasians, were buried at one side of the tree, three feet apart, with their heads facing north. A fourth victim, an unidentified Ameri- African American, was buried at the other side of the tree. All victims had been stabbed more than two dozen times with a blade at least eight inches in length. Jesus. And the trousers of each victim were discovered around their ankles. Now, and I, I think he just wanted to see a dead dick. Mm-hmm. It did the black, or not the black guy, sorry, did the white guys, they all share a grave? No, oh, they okay. were all buried three feet apart. Gotcha. Now uh, think about a, a, a That was a common thing, the uh, pants around the ankles. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That was a common So uh, he just M-O. did his card. thing yeah, and then just M-O. straight kicked them into the grave. Dude, what do you think? Wow. Do you think he got these dudes hard? And then Probably. killed him, and then watched the dick. Well, don't you get hard after you die? Well, well he may have looked. He may have wanted to see what happens to an erect oh, penis. Yeah. Rigor mortis. Kill yeah. them, and then watch the penis go down. You think he learned out the hard way that when you die, you shit yourself? You imagine probably tongue to a hole. Well, we won't uh. know. We won't know, and we won't know. I mean, Larry had a full f- a front row view of all this. That's what I'm saying. He, yeah, that's probably why he stabbed him in the abdomen. Mm-hmm. Saying, well. Watch the guts come rip, out. Watch the shit me this time. Watch the shit sack come out. But shit me now. <laughs> Ain't gonna shit on me this time. <laughs> you gonna shit me? I show you, fucker. Ain't gonna shit on me now. Think about an eight inch blade. That's pretty. 
That's pretty long significant. blade. Yeah. That will run from on me. Almost run from the front to the back, yeah. right out the right yeah. out the other side. I mean, that's that's Especially, a lot of shit to run through. Yeah. I mean, you get a big enough hole, you can hand can go in the wound a little bit, come all the way out. <laughs> just keep on plowing through. Just oh, yeah. blow all the way yeah, through. Pulling shit out. <laughs> yeah. You do a machete. You yeah. just test it at the fucking rope. <laughs> <laughs> Jump out the window. <laughs> I'm just saying he takes that butcher and he's like, shlick. His, it's the, the hole. The incision's in big enough for his fist to go in. If the hill, if he forces, he the hill blows into out it. the other side. Oh, too bad. Oh, he was, too bad. This was before the time where you got the the pipe knife. The knife is just a plastic tube. Oh seen those? yeah, and it takes a core. It takes a core out of you. Oh. See, that's like some that you whole don't. shooting through the other side. That's some John. Uh, that's what, Kung Pao. Yeah, that's that's some <laughs> Kung Pao stuff. Uh, yeah, where you like go through, but you grab the spine and knock the spine out yeah. the other side, or oh, you like grab Mortal, the Mortal Kombat. You grab the heart and get the heart out the other side. Like Luke Kang fatality. I mean, dude, dee, 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 dee. they had that game back then. <laughs> Think about an eighty-inch blade going through your Didn't neck. They? Early nineties, yeah, 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 at a ballpark. Think about a think about a blade going in your neck at this angle. Don't want to. Down, down. Yeah. I mean, what does it think that feels like? I, you've been sliced Death. by a cu- by a blade on your fingers. It, it hurts. It's like that metallic sharp sensation that is un un, un- undescribable. Uh, in Beowulf, it said that when a, a a hot blade, a cold blade pierces the body, it sizzles. I would imagine so. Probably hurts. I think that's just literary <laughs> words there. Why wouldn't it? A hot blade would sizzle. Are we talking about a red hot blade? Talk about a cold blade going into the warm body. Oh, oh, oh. that sizzles. probably would feel like it burns. Yeah, that's why you can take a knife and show people, and mm. be like, "I'm gonna stab you," and then take an ice uh, ice cube and like rub it on their back. And they're like, "Oh fuck!" fuck yeah, that. we. Like yeah, the Punisher sure did. did. Yeah, ice ice pop, a little frozen. I up. have no idea if that's true. I just seen it in a movie. No, it works. And he fried meat and he he would blow torch him. Yeah, and then he was cooking meat in a pan and he put a popsicle on his back. That was the best moment. <laughs> no, you'll you'll freak out if you take a cold tool mm-hmm. um, and just put it on somebody's back. Yeah, and you had been welding and they think like some hot slag go down in their into their uh, pants. Oh yeah, they yeah, will yeah. jump up in a heartbeat. They'll hit their head on stuff if they're inside of something. Yeah, yeah I remember in school like cool. some hot asshole slag. put a drill in my back and I about whipped his ass. He put a yeah. drill into your back, like just touched yeah, it. Yeah, you know how that spot on your back you can put your finger and people be like, oh yeah, yeah. He did that with a drill. I remember getting pissed. Well, you should have. Yeah. Yeah, that's a adequate response. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I wonder, though, what it would be like to get stabbed with a sword. Probably the same as a knife, just bigger. At some point, it's got to kill the nerve endings so you don't feel like, as what much. What if you get a, instead of a stab, you get a, a <laughs> yeah. wham. I've seen oh, now how easy it is to cut yourself in half. <laughs> <laughs> a wall card. Got a lawnmower blade over here. I'm going to use that. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> Down life. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, Cox. does anybody else? You guys have any more details about some uh, some of his uh, victims, right? Some of his early victims, right? Yeah. Or well, any of his victims that we haven't talked about. Uh, I just wondered if he was racist. That's all. I'll oh, probably little. That's weird. Barry, three oh, on this side and one, one on, on this side. side. So Larry was uh, first arrested on s- September thirtieth, nineteen eighty three. It was during a routine traffic stop. He had a hitchhiker with him at the time. So he was he was in the middle of he's about to do it again. He was about to do it. So he was arrested for uh, after talking to the cops and the hitchhiker and stuff. He was arrested for soliciting sex from a young male. So they searched his vehicle without his permission. That's a very key note. So upon mm. uh, searching his vehicle, they found two sections of nylon rope. That's a little suspicious, right? No, I have nylon rope in my car. Yeah, I got I'll yeah, but okay. At this okay, I, I have ropes. five sections. Let me go back. <laughs> Let me go back a little bit. At this point in time, uh, the police in the surrounding counties and states had started a task force for uh, young men that had been murdered and dumped on the side of highways because they were starting to fit together the pieces with the M.O. and everything. Yeah. So the task force was assembled, so they were actually physically looking for someone that was binding people, beating them, and stabbing them to death. Mm. So uh, they found the rope. And then thought it was kind of weird that, hey, this guy's got a hitchhiker with him, too, and they're trying to have sex, kind of starting to... Well, he, the, the cops knew that he was about to bang the guy? Son, are yeah, because okay the hitchhiker talked. Oh, they, the hitchhiker was like, yeah, I'm about, he's taking me back. We're going, yeah, we're going I mean, fuck in the woods. They, 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 <laughs> buddy, if you're not okay, blink twice. So, uh, 
you know, they, they detained Larry for a little bit and then uh, had him in one of those investigation rooms or whatever and searched his vehicle a little further. So then they found a knife, handcuffs, two baseball bats, a mm. mallet, surgical, and surgical tape. It's one for each hand. <laughs> I got two bats. In case one breaks. <laughs> <laughs> Cog. So they actually detained him for a little bit with this first arrest, and they're mm -hmm. like, we got this motherfucker. We got evidence on him. Right. They even uh, collected his boots and uh, a print of his tires. Yeah. So they started to match his mm -hmm. boot prints and his tire prints to earlier crime scenes. So they had a lot of circumstantial evidence, uh, and they connected him to 18 murders with this evidence, mm -hmm. the boot prints and the, uh, the tire tracks. So then they continued to search... Uh, he had another vehicle. He had a pickup truck. They searched it, found more knives, stuff like that. So then they ended up arresting him, and they actually held a trial for him. Mm -hmm. And they were trying to convict him of murder of all these other people. Oh, they screwed up. So they, public perception. They screwed up. Public perception is making it, you would think he's guilty. Yeah, it's you, like. I might think he's guilty, right? Yeah, because the evidence they found, the knife, the rope. He had a hitchhiker, the Boot, no, the does. boots that he owned and mm -hmm. the tire tracks matched the scenes of the crime where they found bodies. So, uh, you know, they investigated this. They questioned him, and uh, they tried to they tried to ask him about his sexuality. Like, dude, you are you uh, mm -hmm. you hooking up with guys? And he refused to comment on it. He was very unopen about this. Are you were guilty. Dude? You a top guy or you a bottom guy? He just <laughs> they he were got, probably confused about it as me. I, should go to talk I don't to know me. what a top is. Probably a bottom guy. I don't know. He just, he wouldn't talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, after they uh, they made plaster cast of the, uh, <laughs> of his dick. <laughs> the, problem here is that they, the problem here is that the cops are idiots. Did they really, Thomas? No, they made plaster cast of, like, the tire tracks and stuff like that so they could go okay. to the different crime okay. scenes and stuff. This was piss poor policing. They did bad the three policing. P's. The three okay. P's. Okay, so... They, you know, they did the investigation. He was in jail, blah, blah, blah. So he got a lawyer. Larry got a lawyer. And they pretty much pulled a fast one on him and said that he was not, he was read his Miranda rights the first time, but that was when they first investigated his vehicle without his permission. The second time they investigated more, he was not read his rights again or through the proper channels. So all of the evidence, the tire tracks, the boot prints, all the extra knives and stuff thrown out. Hmm. Gone. Huh. That you, was out. You mean to tell me you have circumstantial evidence on someone murdering somebody, but he got off on a legality? It happens. It seems like that might happen. Well, they compared this case Surely to the Stephen Avery case. In the 90s. Memphis it happened 3. In the 2020s either. Yeah. Memphis 3. Well, they compared this to the Stephen Avery case, saying if Stephen Avery oh, was yeah. back in this time, then he would have been able to get away just as much like with more stuff. Mm -hmm. I thought he actually didn't do it, though. Eh. <laughs> I guess so, uh, I did it. On February 1st, Judge Block ruled that although Eiler had signed a Miranda waiver upon being detained, he had been taken into custody for interrogation upon charges unrelated to the crime of the murder and was only later detained on charges for soliciting, citing the exclusionary rule for the basis of the decision. So he ruled that the physical evidence recovered by the investigation, the boot prints, the tire tracks, uh, and all that stuff is out based on his constitutional rights. Yep. So they fucked up. Uh, as a result of the ruling, Eiler was freed from custody on February 6, 1984. So, uh, psychopath back on the streets. He was out. He, uh, uh, his family and Robert Little paid the reduced bond fee and got him out. Uh, the police and, uh, the DA and all them tried to appear, appeal the ruling, but it was suppressed. And, uh, four weeks after his... Released from custody, Eiler permanently permanently relocated to Chicago. Now, you uh, guys keep talking about this little fella. <laughs> yep. Yeah. He's he had a crush on him. He's Yeah, Robert Little. So, uh, he resided in an apartment complex in Rogers Park with Robert Little. Oh, okay. He moved to Chicago and moved in with Robert Little. He said Little. he was in Rogers Park? Here's the apartment. In Chicago. Oh, okay. <laughs> Here's your bedroom. This Here's the room. fridge. You get half. I get half. Don't mess with my wine. I'm going to mark everything with my name. I didn't Make do sure it. Make sure you wash the dishes. Take the trash out on a Tuesday. 
<laughs> and that's it. That's Rents important. due on the oh. winds due on Wednesday. Rents so due on Wednesday. He goes to Chicago. It's the yeah. '80s. Nobody knows who he is. Right. So he's fresh know. start. Wow. It's a fresh start. He's, he's walking bald. through the city. He got, and he even bought new tires for his vehicle. And they can't can't make that you. mistake again. Yeah. <laughs> Got to get new tires. So, but he bought uh, new boots, too. Mm, I'm sure he did. Yeah. Probably a 7 inch knife now, too. The and cops are just looking at him like, fuck. God, God damn, he's smart. So, if he was smart, he would have stopped. He would have just yes. said. I have my feel. Okay, I, I almost got caught. I got away with it. Not going to do it <laughs> anymore. Yeah, but daddy fucked that mind up. Daddy dick. Daddy fucked that mind up. He just couldn't stop killing. You can't take the... the you can, can't scratch, man. <laughs> yeah, so... <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. You can take the killer out of the out of the state, but you can't take the, the killer out, out of... The killer? <laughs> you can take the killer out of the state, but you can't take the state out of the mind. Yeah, you can't take the killer out of the mind, but I, do, I can't nail this. I'm retarded. (laughs) (laughs) So pretty much when he moved to Chicago and moved in with Robert Little, that was the guy he was having some relations with that we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. Uh, This very shortly after, well, no, not very, a couple months later, he had his final victim. Yeah. And Uh, we we should get into the details about this final victim. This victim was very fucked up. Yeah, so... uh, his final victim, his name was Daniel Bridges. Mm-hmm. You got a little backstory for Daniel? Yeah, he was 16 at the time, oh. but apparently this kid had been a prostitute since the age of 12. Yep. Pro. So, I mean, imagine that. Imagine Chicago, and this is 1984. Imagine being in the sex trade as a 12-year-old in 1984. I mean. That's bad. So, so he's, he's kind of like high A, high a bat baseball right now. He started to cactus league and work his way up to like he's not oh. quite he's not quite double A. <laughs> Compare him minor leagues to sex trafficking. No, no, no. I feel like <laughs> if uh, <laughs> if he made it to Chicago, he was real. He was at least double A, and he was okay. on the cusp of the big leagues. He was, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> like he was. I'm trying to make it. It was, like, it was a palatable no, comparison. No, I get it. I get it. He, <laughs> yeah. would, he was at least going to get a spring call up. Or, like, it's something. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, spring call up or a September call up. Call up yeah, he, at least at plays in the playoffs. At least, yeah. I'm just trying to figure out what a what a kid in the '80s would have done as a 12 year old prostitute. Harry Bush. Well, yeah, of course, <laughs> of course. But I just wanted I want to know what a was, male, an adult male, would do to a 12 year old boy. Well, you know that Daniel Bridges, uh, he was also the youngest of 13 children. Yeah. So that may mm. have played a part into it as well. Wait, are, was his mom a prostitute? It's possible, you Could know, like, like right, his family was probably the traffickers. No, thirteen's a lot of times to be pregnant. Yeah, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. You know yeah, what but I'm you're saying? not a prostitute getting pregnant thirteen times. Yeah, that's like thirteen years of your life. The ball's on the field. You got to play ball. Unless, unless she's uh, one of those ones that's like, I've always got to be pregnant. That's my niche. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Don't know how to make. We them don't call out. them prostitutes. We call them escorts, Chris. They're sex oh, workers. Yep. You get them from Atlanta to New York. You do you, girl. That's all. That's, that's all Atlanta. I'm saying. So, anyways, <clears throat> once again, this is 1984. This kid was 16 years old, and um, Eilert lured him to his apart- apartment. Yes. Yes. So, uh, inside the apartment, Larry. You know, Larry was like, come on, Daniel. They became friends because they lived in the same apartment complex. Oh, I want to say this. Prostitute? No, no, no. I want to say no. this. Uh, Daniel Bridges knew, he knew he, how yeah. freaking crazy. He knew of Larry. He, and he knew that he was bad. But he's like, $20 is $20. He's like, something turned him on to it. Something. Yeah. He sweet-talked him into that apartment somehow. Well, they lived in the same the same block, too. Kind of like women with jobless building. people. Yeah, yeah. He, probably, he probably befriended him. He was no, like, he's like money, dude. Twenty bucks. I don't 12. think there was a friendship there, because uh, no, there's twenty bucks. Hate. I, th- so I man, think he could have been like upping it, you know, like I give you five bucks to touch yeah, my leg. I give you twenty bucks to touch my balls. Little boys, they rub my hair up. They put <laughs> it back down. <laughs> he he got it up to fifty bucks. That's to come over. the hair is that strand standing straight up. Yeah. Well, it was 1984. Who was a big uh, sports guy back then? Dude, what? 100 bucks. Who was bucks. a big sports, like, baseball player or something? Because basketball wasn't King big Griffey. in 84. Well, Chicago was a shithole in yeah. the early, early 80s. He wasn't going to give this kid money anyways. He could have uh, easily said, I'll give you $500. But the kid's probably like, man, I went to school, and I really just want that new Topps card. And he's like, dude, I'll give you five bucks. This kid wasn't worried about Topps card. This kid was worried about getting some crack. Well, my Larry Bird. Maybe. 
Maybe. I mean, he had some huge problems. I'm sure uh, Daniel Bridges, I'm sure he had a lot of family and life issues, which he could not control. Daniel Bridges would be someone interesting to look into his past and see how he got, got to his point. Him, I, I got a picture of him, yeah. <laughs> Um, but anyways, yes. So, uh, Larry Aller, he, uh, lured Daniel into his apartment, brought him into his room, and then he bound Daniel to a chair with clothes on. So then, uh, after that, he was, uh, Daniel was beaten. He was tortured and he was stabbed to death. Uh, after all of that, I'm sure Larry got a little bit of sexual fun from him too. Larry dismembered the body in his bathroom and cut him into eight pieces and each was complete completely drained of blood in the bathtub before being placed inside six separate trash bags. I imagine he took those body parts and he just was like trying to wring them out like, <laughs> like a fucking like like washcloth. <laughs> this guy was not the... an expert. There's so much blood in here. I was just wringing but these like, arms. He's just like, he cuts the dude just like, nah, whatever. And then he goes into the bathroom. He's just shaking it and draining it. Just like, it's like pouring Parmesan on a pizza. <laughs> or he's just like singing, just like, Panama, <laughs> dan, dan. While he's like just getting the blood out of there, that song went out back then, wasn't it? Just was, tell me when. Okay. He's like, just tell me when to not <laughs> add pepper anymore. He's like pepper cracking. Yeah, pepper back of the saddle the... was out then too. Oh yeah. I'm back. <laughs> or, he's, or he's just listening to the <laughs> listening to Hendrix or something like, oh, on the wash tower. <laughs> he probably was because he's like that stolen valor, so he just probably listened to it along the wash tower. Yeah. Vietnam. Well, he this... just got it blasting. He's just like, meow, meow, meow. Well, this guy may have been listening to the village people. <laughs> oh, jump me. That's why he was the Marine. He was village people. In yeah, it's a good. That's a yeah. He yeah. had the boy dressed up like an Indian. Yeah. All right. So the blood in the sink. <laughs> so you man. So he drained so, and placed the body parts. In six separate trash bags. Yes. So uh, he had to get rid of the body somehow. So smart yeah. old Larry. I ate it. But- <laughs> that's the smart thing to do either eat it or flush it down the toilet something throw out the window but you know he had he had uh he had roommates mm. robert little and uh his wife oh so he was just in the room i think they were roommates right but he was living with Wait, robert little. He, was, he drained the blood yeah <laughs> they, well, he, was, he was living with him right in the same apartment i or? don't know or about did robert that. just help him out Ro- Ro- apparently robert helped him out actually it, the rumor is is that Larry claims that he had nothing to do with this murder. All right, because that's his that's his boo. He said oh, someone else. Robert did it. He said someone Jealous. else killed yeah. this kid. That's his bae. And he was wrongfully <laughs> accused of this murder. So Robert Litter was a super fan, right? Super fan of the guy. No, no, he's an accomplice. Oh. Yeah. And uh, Larry just covered this one up for Robert. Mm. For they, some reason, they he probably didn't... got kinky. He was like, Robert, you want to see what I know what they do? He's like, Yeah, Larry, what? And he's just like, Shing. Right into Daniel. Um, well, it's weird. I don't I don't know why you would protect Robert because apparently he confessed and said Robert helped him with other things, but he never said who actually killed this Daniel Bridges guy in the end, so I don't know who he's trying to protect. I feel like Robert killed him out of jealousy. Jealousy of what? Oh. Of, like, of uh, Larry being with the 16-year-old prostitute. I was like, Oh, you think he walked in on him? I think he just killed the kid and then let uh, Larry take the rat for it. You think Robert walked into this apartment, saw Red, and fucking went crazy and killed And then Larry got blamed for the murder. <clears throat> yeah, because he definitely did get blamed for the murder, but he yeah. swears but, up and down. I mean, the kid's, the guy's going to die. Death row. Dead. Yeah. He's got yeah. AIDS, too. And he confessed and said someone else killed Daniel Bridges. Like, yeah, he wouldn't yeah. know Robert did it. Yeah, yeah, and that's not going to get him off of death row. He's done. So he's. Yeah. I would believe the guy. So... True. Well, so he he went down, and I think he went to not his apartment uh, dumpster, but a different apartment's dumpster yeah. nearby. And uh, he had the six bags, and he went and just whoop dumped them in the trash can. Mm-hmm. But he didn't check to see if anybody was looking. Everybody was looking. Everybody was looking, especially Joseph Bala. He was a janitor. So uh, this all happened on uh, August 21st. He noticed the uh, body being dumped in a unit not meant for use, so Joseph pulled out the first bag and ripped it open. It spilled out Daniel's severed leg. <laughs> I imagine it's like the scene from uh, Fight Club where dumped in the trash bags of fat. Oh, just... <laughs> what happened was, this confused me, what happened was is actually the guy you spoke of thought Joseph that, Bella? that the bags had been placed by someone who did not live there, and they right. call this fly-tipped. 
For some oh, reason, the right. term fly tipped means you're dumping illegally mm-hmm. somewhere right. where you cannot dump. Mm-hmm. Right. So, like you said, he peered in, he saw a bag, and he and it came oh, open. Wonder what's in here? Or he tried and, to pull the bags out, thinking like this motherfucker's not going to dump in my dumpster. Yeah, and all the people that saw, they saw Larry carrying black bags to that dumpster. Yep. And no one actually saw body parts, but they were they definitely saw those black bags being yeah. carried by Larry. Yep, and then he pulled them out and a leg fell out. Yes. It was Daniel's leg. Yes. Unfortunately. Whoa, that's a leg. <laughs> that's a leg I've ever seen one. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Shit. So then the police were called immediately. Yes. And uh that's when oh, yes, they he were called the police for he, something. Okay. He called the police for that. He's like they they interviewed this guy. He's like, Oh man, if Guy downtown, he's just dumping body parts in my dumpster down there. That sounds like an old black man. <laughs> hey now, get out. No, no. <laughs> hey now. So, yeah, Joseph Bala, he uh, called the cops. The cops came. You know, they ripped open all the bags, put up the, cl- the crime tape and all that stuff. And, uh, you know, after investigating uh, witnesses, passerbys, and everybody, they immediately pinned it to Larry with his previous record and – the mo and all that that he had makes sense. We go get every, every time you I hear rip bag. I just imagine guys just, ah! uh, just <laughs> fucking blood and body parts. Or oh, you think this guy's part. angry? He's like he's jumping in my spot. <laughs> oh no, there's more parts here. Uh, just oh, no, there's like, more parts here. <laughs> here. He just <laughs> jumps in the dumpster. Oh goddamn like, it! There's parts no, here too. No, no. Rip that bag open right now. <laughs> rip oh, it. Oh fuck! There's parts here too as yeah, well. A full body. <laughs> did, did you think they tried to like? Like uh, straight Dexter style, just lay out a piece of oh, yeah. plastic and try to put the body back together. together we like, will rebuild him. This Make is him a man. Faster, stronger. It's like, well, it hasn't been that long. We can bring him back, right? It's Chicago miracle. <laughs> Start pumping the chest. I need more blood. <laughs> more blood. Yeah, so this is when Larry got sentenced. Yeah. So uh, he got sentenced a second time, and this time they were able to pass the hammer down on him and got him for murder. Mm-hmm. I want, yeah, I want to say that they were only able to they they had no idea about the other murders. It was yet. only for Daniel. They 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 gave him the death sentence for Daniel. For Daniel, that's yep. smart. That's how you do it. By yep. lethal injection. Yep. <laughs> so, yep, because yeah. they they actually did forensics and everything the proper way. They found his fingerprints on the inside and outside of the bag. They found DNA, hairs. They found blood. Uh, in his apartment, they found the knife with blood on it. They found bleach on the floor mm-hmm. where he tried to clean it. They found Daniel's clothes and pants in uh, Larry's closet yeah, with blood s- on them. For some reason, he licked the blade after he stabbed Daniel. I don't know. This guy was an idiot. He didn't but do that. that but he was his first kill in years, right? But he was Larry, like, oh, he, he, wasn't so no, he wasn't no spring chicken, though. Larry had a leather vest that he wore when he killed Daniel, and he washed it. And hung it back in the closet with Daniel's bloody pants. Daniel, why did you wash this leather <laughs> vest? I like how one attendant asked Larry that saw him dump the bag, asked him why he was throwing away stuff in another trash can. And he says, I'm getting rid of some shit. <laughs> so it, he could have just went and dumped it in his own trash can and probably been fine. Thumbs up, bud. You, you, dude. Do you, like, man. <laughs> like, what, what do you think would have happened? He just walks down and goes to his actual dumpster and just do 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 and throws them in the proper thing. Dude was an Joseph idiot. Joseph Ballard doesn't find it. He was an idiot, man. Like I bet his bathtub was a cast iron bathtub or strong enough that he could have fucking turned that thing into a vat of acid and just, yeah. just killed those bones and flesh in yeah. his bathtub. I mean, if not the they, flesh, then just taking the bones and disposed of them somewhere else. Like, the bones aren't going to stink. It's the flesh that's going to stink. Then he just walked down to the suburbs of Chicago, Chicago with a femur bone just hitting the picket fences. <laughs> and nobody knows you. Nobody knows it's a femur, but you've got a femur and you're doing that. And, and everybody's like, that's a weird guy doing that that's, noise. Where do you find that stick? <laughs> that's an odd looking stick. There's so many different ways to dispose of a body. And that was probably the laziest way to do it. This guy was begging to get caught, needed to get caught. And it wasn't even nighttime. I mean, he was just, he, he, he was, was just, it was three 30 in the afternoon. Anyone that kills deserves to be caught. But this guy, was was he didn't not even, going to the hard to the levels no, to he, conceal his stuff. He did not try. No. He was a lazy individual. So, sentenced to death, lethal injection. And yep. then we get into the very confusing thing of how the other 24 deaths came out. Yes. You guys know about this? Yes. 
Sort of. Where he just kind of confessed. No. He made a plea deal. Yes. He was trying to get his death sentence removed uh, during the appeals part. So he said, hey, I got 20 other murders that y'all, I know y'all haven't solved yet because you haven't pinned it on me. So if I confess to all these other ones, can I get my death sentence reduced to life? Yes, but he gave him a time limit. He said. They didn't take the plea. No, so we, so there uh, were nine districts that all these different murders happened over. Oh, did I mess up? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, no, no. There were, so like, let's say there was nine district attorneys. Yeah, it was in like three different states too, right? So eight of the districts accepted the plea deal. The ninth said, no fucking way. Kill his ass. Mm-hmm. I'm not, I don't care. He's a dead man anyway. Who's that ninth district? Um, I, I the information's there. I just didn't write it down. Okay. So, um, but he gave them a, a time limit. He said, if you don't meet the demands by this time, I'm taking this information to the grave. And they denied it, so he took it to his grave. Yes. That's mm-hmm. awesome. It's like little did he know he was already lethally injected with AIDS years ago. That's correct. Mm-hmm. So do we want to talk about this? Yeah. His, sure. So Larry Eiler died on March 6, 1994. Yeah, like I have a, a line saying he died. I don't have the details of. Well, he died from AIDS yeah. 10 days before he was supposed to be killed. Right. Um, hmm. He had actually been seriously ill um, a long time before that. So I wonder how many inmates he gave AIDS to. They probably didn't want anything to do with him. You don't think so? Can you imagine the guy that probably raped him? And then later it was like, oh, fuck. Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, Easy E. <laughs> <laughs> Did Easy E go to jail? Oh, no, man. I don't want to say that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Easy E died a year later, rip. <laughs> well, who, whoever fucked that guy went, got out of jail, and then Easy E probably shared a needle with that guy. Could have been the guy that raped Magic Johnson, though. Just like a girl. Oh, is that what happened with Magic Johnson? He's like, man, you got a big old Adam's apple, baby. I, get the same I don't care. <laughs> Suck on this dick. I swallow it all. <laughs> yeah. Got a big old throat, too. Get good calves. Well, the reason we know about the other 20 deaths is because he let his uh, lawyer spill the beans on it af- after his death. So two days after he died, he legally said, okay, I confessed everything to you. Just tell everybody. Mm-hmm. So that's how they found out about all the other ones. And, you know, some of them, they were still – they. You know, we're like, well, maybe he was just saying it or not, but you know, at least it helped a little bit. I think some of the bodies they didn't ever find. There was no. a few that they didn't find, and they couldn't identify four of them. Yeah, so it was. They have their skeletons, but they don't have their identification. Like this was a time where you didn't have DNA IDs and stuff like that. They yeah, couldn't, no. they couldn't do like the was it like bone marrow scans and shit and teeth dental records and stuff they still have the bones they're mm. they didn't I, have dental records or something probably so, so they like had dental records back then that was like the big thing if you didn't go to the dentist oh well, fair enough but <laughs> well and plus if you hadn't been incarcerated you weren't in the system with fingerprints either yeah. so um and we if, all are because we had that five-year-old id that's right. So it, we're in the system. Somewhere. Man, they they tricked us. Yeah, I've been goofed. God, <laughs> don't fucking, commit any crimes without they gloves fucking on. Tricked us. <laughs> been bamboozled. So this is how we pulled the wool no, over. See, our Alex, arm. he beat the system. He came down from Virginia. He's like, I'll be a crime lord. This <laughs> <laughs> is my syndicate now. They can never ID copper. So the Thank the you. bodies, <laughs> the bodies were so decomposed that they were not able to be identified by family or there weren't family of these deceased individuals he mentioned a family walking in it's like <laughs> we found a little it's like he's like john i think we have your son here and oh, do the you? guy's like oh thank god <laughs> he looks down it's a fucking like half the decomposed head it's like the mummy the mummy just the fucking, right up like, like <laughs> That was John. That was John's that smile. Was, that was his signature pose. He picture. This one never got identified. Imagine this one: the skeleton, the skeletonized body of an unidentified young man was discovered buried in a field. This decadent, this this, this decadent, this, decadent. The it se- was decadent, the savory. What's, this, this, what's a decadent? Uh, the skeleton the, the was so nice. The decadence of my murder. <laughs> I love it's skeletons fresh, at Christmas I put fresh time. On it. So <laughs> it, it says that they think he was Caucasian with shoulder-length reddish-brown hair. 
Can well, you some imagine this? Somebody got it jumped off Lane Street and died. <laughs> it does. It does. Can you imagine this skeletonized body with still shoulder length <laughs> red hair? <laughs> Oh, you, can you imagine going in and they pull the cover up to be like, is that your son? <laughs> and it's ugly. like, <laughs> like yes, it looks like the life is sucked out of this body. Yeah. And you're like, uh, he's still, I'm scarred for life now. Moist. Thank you. Like he's still moist. <laughs> I remember brushing his hair as a child. I could never forget. Oh, the mom just goes, picks it up, starts rubbing it. Oh, yeah. Johnny! She picks it up, starts rubbing it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, oh, there was no, there was though. nothing on the bodies either to give it away, like no tattoos, no birthmarks, so mm, everything just, was just gone. Bones. This is four people that they have bones of, but they don't have DNA. They don't have nothing in the system to the, uh, tell them who they are. Hair. You got the yeah. one. Yeah. You have to have your DNA. You have to have it's something just, in the system. <laughs> yeah, so but they, they can, can match take it. his hair and be like, but nobody came forward. So I, no we one's were, missing a redheaded son. We made a joke they about that, but it never. Nobody ever came to claim him. Do you think they really care about the redheaded son? That's what I'm apparently finding out now. <laughs> probably like a blessing in disguise. <laughs> Finally, that kid's gone. <laughs> they just closed that closed oh, that kid back into man. the morgue. Thing. They might not want to because be like, then they're admitting their kid was gay. Uh, or they get a daughter that goes to oh. Ruben next. Yes. I see what you're saying. What are, What did you say? Yeah, they didn't want or to had a daughter. tarnish their family. Yeah, their daughter yeah. went to Aruba. Oh. Aruba. I remember that. I just see, like, the uh, the medical examiner just like, this is your son. And they go through all that stuff, and then he puts the curtain thing back. The family starts walking away. He closes the body back in the morgue thing and looks down. And he's like, sir, you dropped a piece of beef jerky. Oh, God. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a. There's no sloppy That's not a bullet stick. <laughs> <laughs> well, Is that Jack Link's? There's somebody called a squash. I did squash. <laughs> Man, I saw it chewy. Oh. <laughs> when they start putting cream in the middle of these damn jerky, you get sticks. your jerky mixed up. That's a bad day. Say like jerky cheese mixed together. Tastes <laughs> tastes like it's been marinated in ginger. It's just. <laughs> so, it's just like goddamn soy sauce for this thing. Marinated in ginger. <laughs> Put some more shabby on it. Alex, do you have any <laughs> anything that's unique to the story that you can talk about? We can talk about the trial of Robert Little. I yeah. want to hear about Robert Little. Let's do it. So this yeah. is just like the so Robert David Little ultimately made a monster out of Larry Eiler because he opened his home to him between 1975 and 1984, in which he called it "Lapse of Judgment." A lapse. Yeah, it was just a small <laughs> lapse in judgment. Yo, I'm thinking he's like this guy and he's Illuminati fucking killing he's people. Because like, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he was a respected professional yeah. uh, and he was a former president of the uh, Indiana Civil Liberties Union chapter. And, like, he was highly regarded in his community. Oh. Right? Who Robert Little was? The yes. monsters normally are. So him and his wife are, like, orchestrating this whole thing behind we got this guy out yeah. there killing they're, you know? they're, they're rubbing yeah, they're Larry's like the, shoulders like, like they're getting they're getting a master of puppets Larry so it's speak. okay master. don't worry about it Larry master. it's just a life that no one cares about yeah so jury selection for Little's trial began at Newport Indiana on April 9th 1991 yes prosecutor Mark Greenwell was matched against defense attorneys Dennis Zahn and James Voiles opening statements were made on April 11th Greenwell telling jurors that Little had con- conceived a murder plan on the night of December 19, 1982, after watching the violent porn film Caligula. Have you guys heard about that movie? No. no. What's it about? It's a, a movie made in the 70s with, um, it's a, like a Roman era movie. Oh. What's that old know. lady that's in the Fast and Furious movies? The hot old lady. I'm talking about... The mom of Jason Statham? I don't know. Oh, yeah, but I don't know the name. She's in this movie hmm. with uh, the guy from uh, Clockwork Orange. Does she Orange. get naked? There's titties in the movie. What? Hers? I'm not sure about hers. Hmm. But it was, a, it was a very, I guess you can say, a controversial movie in the 70s. Well, yeah, back then, yeah. Yeah, yeah it was a big deal back then because, like, oh, my God, it was... It's like, it's like watching on Game the big screen. It's like, it's like imagine watching Game of Thrones <laughs> in the 70s. Yeah, they'd lose their oh, minds. Okay. So he watched this movie with Eiler. A copy of the film on videotape has been seized when police searched a home on December 1990, but nothing else was found to support the murder charge. It rests entirely, as Greenwell admitted, on the testimony of convicted killer Larry Eiler. Yep. Without his statement, you don't have a case. Little's defenders countered with the claim that Eiler's statements were self-serving lies. He hoped to save himself by sacrificing Little. This is Larry Eiler's story, Voyles observed. What was chosen until eight years afterward. To discredit the lie, Voyles and Zion planned to prove that Little was in Florida. That way he wasn't there 
when uh, Bridges was murdered. Give him an alibi. Right. Eiler was the state's first witness on April 11th, repeating his tale of murder inspired and directed by Little. So he was trying to say that Little orchestrated the whole murder of Danny Bridge, Daniel Bridges. Oh, wow. Eiler claimed that Little joined in stabbing Agin also. Oh, yeah, Stephen Agin. Yeah. Then masturbated while Eiler finished the job. Wow. When he was done, Eiler said Little had lowered his camera and complained that it went too fast. So he was videotaping the murder. Oh, he's getting ready for the dark web. Yeah. A new twist was added when Eiler's claimed that Little, not Eiler, had murdered Danny Bridges. So Little, in his thing, was trying to say that he murdered Agin and Danny Bridges. Mm. Hmm. Two more prosecution witnesses, Mark Miller and Keith Hegelmeyer, testified on April 11th that they had posed nude while Little snapped photographs, but neither recalled any violent behavior. And their testimony added nothing to Little's acknowledged interest in nude photo- photography. Agin's grisly murder was portrayed to jurors on April 12th. So Greenwell displayed photographs in bloody clothes before crim- criminologist Michael Goldman described how Agin's body was cut open and his intestines were hanging out in the open. Pathologist John Pless confirmed that Agin's murder was the worst case he's ever seen and uh, of the body being cut in pieces. But nothing was proven to put Little at the crime. Right. The defense case was simple. Branding Eiler a liar and presenting an alibi that placed Little's hundreds of miles away from the crime scene. His mother testified that Little never missed a Christmas visit to Tampa between 1958 and 1990, adding that he had arrived in Florida between December 19, 19, 1982. A neighbor confirmed Little's presence in Tampa, but thought he may have arrived as late as December 22nd or 23rd. Greenwell produced documents proving that Little's car had been repaired at a Clinton, Indiana garage on December 21st, 1982, with the bill paid in cash, but none of the car has been repaired. But none of his witnesses from the garage could remember who bought the car in. Money was also withdrawn from the automatic teller at Little's bank shortly after midnight on December 22nd, 1982. But again, there was no witnesses to the transaction. I mean, do you think that this guy was that smart and willing to go to those extremes to cover up his tracks? I don't know. Maybe. This guy was like in part of a deep society. I think he was. Yeah, we didn't. Did we talk about the Stegen, Stephen Agin uh, murder? And we didn't. We didn't actually talk about Agin's murder. Yeah. So the uh, December nineteenth, uh, Stephen Agin. He was twenty three years old. He was abducted. Uh, his body was discovered in a woodland close to Indiana State Road sixty three uh, on December twenty eighth. An examin- examination of an outbuilding near an abandoned farm, close to where Stephen's body had been discovered. Revealed traces of human flesh upon the walls in the areas where plaster had been damaged, leading investigators to speculate Stephen had been suspended against the walls of this property as his murderer had inflicted the injuries to his body. So the extensive mutilation of his body up against the wall suggested that uh, Larry did not do this act by himself, that there must in fact have been two people there. And that was some supporting evidence for this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that dude got fucked up. Yes. Yeah, got, got murdered. Yeah, he got, That's like some Hellraiser shit. Yeah, he got bad. How old was he? He was uh, 23. Okay. I mean, it's terrible either way, but at least he wasn't 15 when it happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Little decided to te- uh, decline to testify at his trial, putting the trust in the jury, and his face was rewarded with acquittal on April 17th, 1991. And Mark Greenwell said that um, he didn't get convicted because Eiler was didn't have had he had uh, credibility problems. You couldn't trust Eiler. Oh yeah, it murdered. Yeah, <laughs> it murdered somebody. But yeah. if, if the jury would have trusted Eiler, they would have convicted Little with two murders. Yep. Yeah, I get. So was <clears throat> did did Eiler try to confess and and bring this stuff to the light? After he was convicted and in jail? Yes. So I guess you have to be careful as a prosecutor and a judge and a jury. Because he might be just trying to get at, get people just for the hell of it. Yeah, as a, as a like, they're my enemies, so Everybody's I'm going to take enemy. them with me and fuck that guy. Yeah. So I yeah. guess I see the and problem you, and be, like, the, the the dangers of being a judge and a jury. Well, you know, also during that case, they brought up the, the homosexual, the the homosexuality stuff a lot, I'm sure, which made everybody in that mm-hmm. day and age very uncomfortable. So they're like, let's just get this over with. Let's just so I think let's call it a day. So I think Robert Little helped kill Agin, 
and then killed Danny Bridges to get back, like, at Larry. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, jealousy. Like, I helped you into this apartment, see? And I gave you money and bought, yeah. you, bought you new things, and this is how you repay me? Yeah. Gotcha, bitch. And then got yeah. him caught on that crime. Huh. Regardless of... Regardless, I believe <laughs> that he helped. Definitely. Yes, definitely some helped. way or another. Yeah. But what if Larry didn't help? He just comes home, there's like a dead body in his room, and he's like... Well, I guess I better drain the blood and well, throw I think, it away. I think I was saying that Robert helped Larry kill Steve Agins. Yeah, so right. in some way, it, yeah. on on all these <laughs> on all these bodies murdered, somehow the Doctor Little helped in some yeah. form or fashion at some point. Right, with helped. someone he helped, uh, or either, he either knew. He, either he stumbled he, across it, he and knew, it, or he knew what Eiler was doing. Yeah, and in, and he encouraged Eiler to do it. Mm-hmm. So, in some form or fashion, he is as guilty as Eiler is. Even if he allowed it to keep going on. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, is I is uh, is Doctor Little still alive? Uh, I don't know about that right now. I don't know. I wonder. <clears throat> no, I think he's dead. Professor who lived with Eiler charged in eighty two torture killing. Did you guys? Apparently he's apparently the professor was charged. Are we getting to that, Alex? I didn't see that one. Uh, let's I just had stuff tied to that for. I so, think that's I think that's what that was. He was charged with it, but they didn't convict him. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah. So it says to authorities Tuesday charged the professor with the murder of the 1982 torture slaying of Stephen Agin. Mm. Uh, in announcing the charges, said he has evidence that little. Um, may have plotted to commit other killings in Chicago. And then Eiler's on death row. He was 37 when he went to death row. Wow. <clears throat> um, on, for Daniel Bridges, who was 15 at the time. Um, so I thought we said 16, but apparently he was 15. But yeah. Uh, um, yeah, my so, site said 16. Yeah, it's a 16 on that one. I guess it depends on if you're doing daylight savings times or not. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot here uh we brought the facts uh these are all facts anyone can find but we brought the facts to you and added some opinions to it yeah we definitely have our opinions um added a little flair we definitely once again aren't endorsing murder and uh serial no. killing and we're <laughs> not we're not justifying what steven eiler did we're not putting him on steven a pedestal I, larry eiler larry there's probably a Steven Eiler, too, that's out there killing on a, in a parallel well, he, universe. Yeah. He, he confessed he had accomplished on four murders. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> that there were possibly more than Dr. Little. There were possibly more people involved than Dr. Little. I just so. want to call him Dr. Doolittle so <laughs> fucking <Doolittle>. bad. <laughs> I mean, monkey, hand me my knife. <laughs> He's dead gas. Were you talking like remake Doolittle? Or? Oh, God. Oh, with, all with Robert Downey? Yeah. Downey? No. Well. Didn't see that one. Didn't me either. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in to our 18th episode. Um, we're pretty proud of this podcast. <laughs> we're all together again, which which also is pretty, we're pretty proud to be able to achieve. But that said, coronavirus. It ain't over yet. It's, it's coming, coming back. back, boys. Rearing. And where I used to work, two people have coronavirus now. Shit. Nice. And it's only going to get worse because in 10 days, over. we'll see what it's like in 10 days. Good thing you're not still working there. That's you'd right. Probably be like, oh fuck. Yeah, and you got to keep going to work. You just have to wear a mask. But that said, coronavirus is making an ass kicking, coming back, and uh, we're trying to stay safe. Which uh, this room is questionable. I'm, I'm looking. We're around talking this. into our filters. We're okay. <laughs> I'm looking at this room. I'm a little scared now. Uh, <laughs> That's okay. But this is our 18th episode. 20 is coming up fast. 30 is also coming up fast, and when 30 hits. That's when you got to worry about cancer. And when 50 hits, we're going to have to get colonoscopies. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. So uh, make sure that you're um, sharing this, you're telling your friends and family, and you're not getting too offended. Um, but if you get offended, we're sorry. Come back next time. Give us a try again. Find some happiness in this dark time. Yep. Get offended again. Um, I'm going to get the outro going. Thomas is going to hit you with some uh, – with some important links, okay. but that with before that, let's hit let's get this outro going, and I'm gonna ask everybody if they've got some some closing remarks. Yep. 
So, I'm going to leave you with this. Be careful out there. Wear your mask while you're in food line. Wash your hands, you dirty fucking cucks. I saw you in fucking QT take a piss, and then you walked out without washing your hands. Well, you looked down? No, there was a guy at the stall. <laughs> I'm saying you looked down. No, He's off I was walking in. I was walking in, and there was a girl. There was a girl. <laughs> no, there wasn't a girl. I walk, I, the, the song's throwing me off. That'd be I'm weird. just saying, dude, I've only ever seen one penis at a urinal, and it's my own. <laughs> I was walking through the door, and this man got done peeing, and he, he came from the urinal to the sink. And yeah. he did not wash his hands, and then he went out to get Sunshine. chips. Oh, well, that's that's a debatable thing. Do you, <laughs> what Thomas? I, I, I thought about it before. Was <laughs> like you walk if, in if you just like pull your pants down and just let it go and pull your pants right back up with no touching. Is that technically getting any dirty? So he like, had a latex glove on too. One uh, one latex glove on. He's Michael Jackson in that thing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to leave you with a wash your fucking hands. Chris, what do you got? You know, I'm liking what you're saying about the hands. Wash your hands, cover your face. Like that. And then you, uh, you know, stay safe, everybody. And uh, rip the guy that made Batman and Robin. Oh, Joel Schumacher. Rest yep. in peace. Oh, man. He died. All right. Yeah. Alex, what do you got, uh, Alex? I say always support your local small businesses. I'm going to head up to Mooresville and visit Down with Donuts, where they have people with Downs making donuts. Nice. Hell dude. yeah. Is Giving that, them a real? chance. Is that, is that real? Oh, I'm, cool. I'm sure yes. the donuts are just fine. Okay. We'll see. Oh. <laughs> Thomas, <laughs> what do you got? I just uh, <laughs> Thanks for everybody that's listening, sharing our show giving us likes we love everybody uh if you're listening keep listening tell your friends tell your family tell people you like and don't like to hey check this stuff out it's cool oh yeah and uh shout out to the hair hysterical podcast apparently people that might bring people over here and me to us (laughs) what was that (laughs) (laughs) after this what was it hysterical i think that's how it's called i don't know i'm not agree me no read good well that's that said give us a like give us a review good or bad we want them all we need it we need the shares we We need the exposure (laughs) yep well so Thomas, hit him. What the fuck are we doing? (laughs) Hit hit him with the links. What the fuck are we doing? Hit him with the links. Okay, yeah, everybody share share the shit and let everybody know. All right. (laughs) (laughs) Man, I really want a donut, though, for sure. Okay. If you enjoy our show, make sure to search Tack Lab on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You can support us at patreon.com slash Tack Lab. Make sure you leave some feedback, a comment, and a good review wherever you're listening. You can also reach us at TacLabPod at gmail.com. That's TacLabPod, T-A-C-T-L-A-B-P-O-D at gmail.com. Thanks from all of us. Give us a comment and stuff, and uh, tell your friends we're finally legal. <laughs>